Welcome, everybody, to Starting Out Bright. I'm Noreen Savage, and you're in for a treat because Pat Hatfield is in the house. But before we get to Pat, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, who I am and who I'm not. First of all, I am nobody official with Brightline Eating, but I really love the program, and that's why I'm here. We hope that this conversation will bring hope and inspire somebody. Um, just to let you know, I got introduced by a friend, Lori, who posted on Facebook. It was her one year birthday, birthday, and she told the world that she had lost 57 pounds on this program, Bright Line Eating. And if anybody was interested, they could just message her. So my hot little fingers got over to Messenger as fast as they could to find out the scoop. And Lori proceeded to tell me about a book, Bright Line Eating by Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson, and the program that has four bright lines that you don't cross. No sugar, no flour, three meals a day, weight and measured portions. And when I heard all that, I was sunk. I thought there is absolutely no way that I could do that. But where was I? I was sitting at five foot two and 270 pounds. I had excruciating pain in my knee. My feet had been swollen for about a year. I had horrible snoring and sleep apnea. And honestly, some nights I went to bed and wondered if I would wake up in the morning. It was getting that bad and I was getting scared. But it wasn't from lack of trying, because I had tried diet after diet after diet. But this just seemed so extreme. Well, my friends invited me to lunch. We talked about it. And afterwards, she suggested two things. That one, I get the book. And two, I get into the online community. At the time, she suggested a group, private group, still going strong. We eat right with lines. Um since then, I mean, we have our own group, Starting Out Bright, which is a private group, and many other groups, including Michigan's Brightest, where I met Pat. We'll get into that a little bit. But I got into that first group, We Eat Bright with Lines, and I just sat and watched and read about transformation after transformation and my heart felt hope for the first time in a long time. I then took about two months that I jumped in and got started. That was four years ago. A couple of weeks ago marked four years. I'm down about 95 pounds. My, I have no pain in my feet or my knee. I don't snore. It's just been amazing. And so it's been a blessing in my life. And I'm hoping there's one person who will receive that hope tonight. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Pat. Hi, Pat. Hello. Hello. Say hi. You got a lot Hello, of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So glad to be here. So glad you're here. Um, yeah. And Noreen, you are an inspiration. 
Oh, Pat, thank you. It was yeah, great you, talking with yeah. you the other night. And, yes. you know, we have a lot in common. And I can't wait for everybody to hear about what you're doing. First of all, what brought us together to know each other is Michigan's Brightest. And go ahead and talk really quickly about what's coming up in September. So um, we have an all-state event on September 30th. This will be our third all-state event. Um, and um, so I'll say really quick that Noreen was the inspiration to get this going. When I listened to Noreen and her choice to share her program with people, um, after um, her one year success, um, I, I had recently retired and I was kind of looking for more in my life and, and a project to work on. And I thought, Kath, I love what Noreen's doing, the sharing a program, um, bringing people together. And so the idea of having an all state event came to me and um, it has just been wonderful. The number of people who are all interested in Michigan and getting together, the number of people who have stepped forward and really, really been great on the committee to get the events going. So we have a September 30th event in Michigan. And if you want to know more about that, you can um, join the Michigan Brightest Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Now, is it so, open to other people, too? It's open to anybody in any state. Okay. Um, you're, anybody's welcome. Um, Noreen's going to be a speaker at that event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, um, we have a couple other speakers too. And, and actually all of that information is, is on our Michigan Brightest um, okay. Facebook page. Well, it'll so. be on the starting out bright group too. So oh, great. Wonderful. We'll be, wonderful. We'll be informing people. And I forgot to mention in when I was, I was getting so excited to talk about you, Pat, I forgot to say the part about that the group with the, we bright with lines was so inspiring. And when I got started, I, I was so thrilled, you know, it was working out. I promised myself if I lasted one year, I would do what Lori did. I would post on Facebook and help people, you know, just get familiar with it. Well, the year came up, I'm a Christian, and I was sitting back in that chair getting ready to post, and God inspired me to get connect people by Zoom and to have them tell their stories. So, that's why we're here. And I'm so glad you are, you know, working with Michigan Brightest to bring people together. It's so important to bring together people and to share our stories, our struggles and our successes. And we're going to do that on September 30th, for sure. Absolutely. I really Absolutely. look forward yes. to it. I feel honored yeah. to be asked to talk yeah. at the at the conference. So thank you for that. So let's well, thank get started you. with what got you into starting off with bright line eating what where were you you can go back as far as you want so um i started when i was 59 um and i was at that point in life where i had had been on other programs my my whole life i think i started dieting when i was 13 yeah. the whole story there um and i've been successful at times losing the weight had to lose it I don't know how many times. And as I was aging, and um, thanks to um, menopause, I was having a harder and harder time losing the weight. And I was getting more discouraged. I was on a restrictive diet. Um, but then I would just sometimes binge, just go off it. Um, the brain fog was, was there. Um, and just the real discouragement that is this going to be the rest of my life? Um, and I was so lucky because I had an email float into my inbox from Hay House, actually. And I put that email off to the side. I could see it was about weight loss. And the minute I listened to those first three videos, I don't know those of you who have listened to those. Um, I know there's a name to them, and I'm sorry. There's a food remember. freedom. Yeah, yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, they are talking about me right there. And a week later, I started the program and I started it full blown. I started October 1st, um, 2019. I had about 40 pounds to lose and I lost that in seven months. And um, many of you 
that I've talked to have said the same thing. It just melted off. It just, just melted off. And so there was lots of dopamine during that time. Um, and it was interesting because my son, who's a music therapist and, and, and working on his master's in social work right now, he and I were out to dinner. Um, and um, he actually had invited me to take a yoga class with him. So we would go out to dinner after this yoga class and talk. And he was really interested in the nutrition side of, of what I was doing. And so I was talking to him and he said, you know, now is the easy part. The hard part is going to be when you have to maintain it. And it really got me thinking that was why bright light eating was working um, or, or why it has worked. So I've been in almost four years. Um, I've been within seven pounds of my um, goal. Um, and I, it's interesting because I really have the confidence that I will never get um, outside of my goal range again. Um, but that concept of maintenance is going to be the hard part really, really came home to me. Um, I did really well the first year by myself. I, I, was on the Facebook community, but I'm not a huge chatter on f Facebook. Yeah. Um, and I could feel about a year into it, my motivation was slipping. Mm. And so I'd listen to the, the different videos talking about how important um, people were. Um, and so I found a buddy and she and I are very good friends. We've never even, I think this may be the first time she's ever seen me. That's great. We've talked weekly or every other week for three years and we're wonderful friends. Um, and, um, talk about a gift from heaven. We just had so much in common and we've become really wonderful friends. That's my friend Cynthia in California. And you would um, never have met. We've never met. We, we would have never have met without. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Not at all. Okay. And um, so that was the start of, of um, getting social contact. Um, and then at two years, um, I could feel myself slipping again. So I reached out to have a um, mastermind group. And two of my mastermind, um, it's a group of three. And I have Patty here and Kate here. Um, both I can see they're on the call. Um, and we are just wonderful. We talk every Thursday morning and we're in very different places in our program. Okay. But we have wonderful conversations and we really feel the support and love for each other. Isn't um, it amazing that it just seems no matter who you meet or where you go, there's just this understanding oh, that brings us together. Absolutely. And, and um, understanding and compassion and really a no judgment. Um, there's people that I've met that are at goal and very um, tight at staying at goal. There's people I've met that have struggled um, with both binge eating, um, with they've regained their weight. And I find that we're all here really understanding that food is different for us. Right. Um, it, and, and it's, and within the group, it's how, how we react to food is different and, and what it means to us and, and how it's positively and negatively influenced our lives. Well, I think your son was onto something when he Absolutely. said about the maintenance, because don't you agree it's not just about the food? We just have to Ab deal with, you know, not even just what's in front of us, but the memories we hold from behind, you know, from back when you don't even realize. I mean, I, I've had things that I've drawn from my past that I'm like, what in the world is coming up on, in me, you know? So you said a couple of things that you went through, you lost the weight like it was a sport, just probably <laughs> losing weight, getting into smaller clothes, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It melts off, you're doing great, 
about a year later, now you're start, in that yep. maintenance struggle a little yep. bit, but you get a buddy. Yeah, and and it helped so much just to tighten up the program. And what I find is a couple things. When I have not been real tight in my program, um, I've learned about myself. And I, I so it's interesting because as much as, as so many of us, of us have the goal of staying bright all the time, um, I've learned the most when I haven't stayed bright. Mm. Um, and, and it has been about forgiveness. Um, I, um, but it's really been learning about why I've had difficulties my whole life in um, losing weight and keeping the weight off. Um, and there were a couple things I found out. One of, one of them was socializing was one of my most difficult times. And um, I, I could not figure out why I was having such a hard time with that. And I started doing some parts work. And I found out I had a um, sweet grandma. She's my grandma. In me, I have a visual image of her, that little cartoon grandma that you've seen with the gray hair. Um, she, she's my grandma. Um, and she was being so sweet and kind to me when I would go out and socialize. And she would say to me, oh, honey, you just have a good time. You don't have to worry about um, anything. You have a good time. You laugh. You you can say things that are silly. You can be silly. You just have a good time. And she also was helping me to let loose with my food. Um, and she was actually pretty easy to get in check with. Um, and I just, if you've done any parts work, you understand talking to your part. Um, all I needed to say was, let's find a different way. That's not helping me um, the way you think it is. And she backed right off. And socializing has totally changed for me. Um, and it really tightened my program up. And for those who are not familiar with what you're saying as far as parts, um, I would just suggest the, the terminology, I believe, is internal family systems. There are books on the subject, like No Bad Parts. Uh, I know that's one of them. You were working on a different book that you mentioned the other day. That I, I, I don't know if any of you have seen the name Laura Lively mm -hmm. in um, our Facebook group. She actually um, is a parts work practitioner or internal family systems practitioner. And I have joined a group. Um, she and four other three other practitioners um, are um, they have a 22 week group that they have started and the name of the book is um, the loving parent guidebook which is a parts work book through adult children of alcoholics um, and so whether whether you're from a dysfunctional or or um, alcoholic family or not, it really is a book about getting in touch with your parts and feeling better about yourself. Um, so this is a workbook that somebody could just go like on Amazon and buy? Yeah, I bought it on Amazon. Okay. Uh, it's written by Adult Children of, of Alcoholics Group. Um, and, and is it a uh, book that you could possibly do yourself or you really should take into with someone who is counseling you or guiding I think you could do it by yourself okay. I think it's always interesting to talk about what your stuff is okay and the name of the group I I believe is parts playground but I'll find out for sure and post it in starting out bright right or right. as a part of starting out bright group and she's also been on the zoom chats and so I'd love to connect her with anybody. You know, we'll mention that in the group, though. Okay. But, so, and the other thing that you were saying about grandma, from my understanding, and I haven't really done one-on-one -on -one parts work, but what you described is she's the indulger. She yes, wants to she, indulge you, your very yeah. happy self. 
There are other parts too. Yes, Kathy is mentioning it is parts playground group. I believe that's a private group on Facebook. So if that's something that interests you, I'm sure that Laura would would welcome you there. Yeah. So so you have the indulger and there are parts too, like I think firefighter or something like that. So I'm a a newbie to parts work as well. Um, So I'm still um, working on on figuring out who helps me where or who does not help me where Mm -hmm. within my um, internal family system. Um, So the indulger is the one that I've really gotten in good touch with. And I'm just going to mention really quickly... um, as I said, I haven't done like one-on-one parts work, but just the understanding from people who have been on starting out bright, and Laura being one of them, Karen was on here too. I just kind of went deeply into myself and realized I had a protector part uh-huh. and I had this fear of missing out. Uh-huh. And so, and it was an instance from being a child and missing out on something big and once it's kind of like you said, Pat, once you realize what's going on, the the part in you wants to help you. Like just yes. to have fun is to help you. Don't miss out is to help me. But when I when I finally realized what was going on, I could say, Hey, I'm grown up now. I'm not going to miss out. If I want to go, I can go. If I wanted to eat that, I could eat it, but I choose not to. And, and it makes me happier that way. So I want to talk a little bit about choices. So one of the things that has really helped me is recognizing that living a bright line eating life story, style is a choice. And I mean, we all know that part, but What I found was that as I started getting closer to my goal weight, um, I stopped having this daily self-loathing. Every morning I get dressed in the morning and I didn't know I was doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would um, kind of get dressed, get ready to go to work and think, Oh, I did the best I could today and kind of rag on myself. And I didn't really know I was doing it until I noticed I stopped doing it. That I was getting dressed in the morning and I was contented with who I was and and what I look like. Um, and um, it that feeling of no longer ragging on myself was wonderful. It really felt like, wow, I didn't know I was doing it. And now that I'm not doing it, it feels good. And it lifted um, this barrier I had to finding other ways to feel good about myself, Um, which is part of why I do the parts work, um, to find out other things that come in my life that are kind of dragging me down or or keeping me from from having a, a good day or a happy day. And um, it's been really interesting because one of the motivators for me um, is the choice to treat myself well. Um, And bright line eating is my choice to treat myself well. Um, I've said before, it is the best thing I have ever done for myself in the entirety of my life. Um, well, maybe other than marrying my husband and having my children, but but um, that one thing of, one choice I made of the absolute best thing. And um, I've, I've heard people talk about whether they want to join the, um, the official Bright Line Eating and mm-hmm. pay the money per year. I actually have chosen to stick with this. I, that I don't listen to all of the stuff, um, but I... I choose to spend that money on myself as a gift to myself to treat myself well. Um, And then I have the availability of listening to stuff. If I choose to, um, 
or um, being in groups that I would not otherwise be able to be in. And I just consider it a, a cost of, of health for me now. Now, what do you like the best about the membership? Just the camaraderie with people then? or I like the camaraderie. I like the um, new information. I like being part of a Gideon Games group. Um, and then access to information as needed. Well, because they do have offer a lot of courses. Right, right. Yeah. And that... Yeah. You know, if you are partaking in that, I would think that that would be very enjoyable or those times that you're slipping right. to go back. Yeah. So you don't have to, I mean, they do have accountability calls and everything else. So, I mean, it's great to hear that part that you don't have to do everything. You know, and you mentioned the other night something that I hit on just for myself. You said that in the beginning, and I think this was in the membership, there was so much available that you had to just stop and just pick and choose. Is that right. right? So, um, like I said, I started four years ago. I started in the boot camp. So, what was that, a 10-week boot camp? And I could tell that there was a lot of information coming in and a lot of recommendations for different activities to take on. Um, and I could start feeling it becoming overwhelming to me. And I knew I had to find a way to um, whittle away what was feeling overwhelming because I could, I could feel myself um, starting to want to back out um, because of that overwhelming feeling. And so there were several things that um, I found I did not need as part of my program. Um, and, and that's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but I really did identify some major pieces that I needed to do. Um, and then I, I gave myself permission to not follow perfectly um, or not do all of the recommended things perfectly because they just were, they weren't good for me. They, um, and it's, um, and I think each of us need to figure out what those are. Some people I know need all of the um, recommended things, but um, I know other people that have found a really good solid program with figuring out what works for them. Um, I actually do not write my food down and I do not um, commit. Well, since I don't write it down, I don't commit it because I made the commitment to myself that I was going to on a daily basis eat within the um, prescribed amounts and, and times. Um, and that's worked for me well for three and a half years. Um, when, I've tr when I've needed to tighten up a little bit, I've gone back to writing it down mm -hmm. again. But I found that the real commitment I made to myself was, I'm just going to stick with the program. I'm just going to follow the fabulous plan. Okay, um, just follow the fabulous plan. Yes. Kathy yes. here is saying in the comments, the love and safety and connection in the Bright Line Eating community is pretty priceless as well. I would Absolutely. agree. And one, one word that I heard you say is perfectly. I think that if anybody has uh, the touch of perfectionism, you can call it good or bad, um, that can overwhelm you too. If you think yes. you're not doing it perfectly. Yes. Because... Sometimes I, I'm the imperfect perfection, perfectionist, you know, I know I don't do things perfectly, but I want to. So if I feel I'm not up to par, I'm not keeping up, I can just like get out of it completely, you know, and just yeah. kind of piggybacking, piggybacking on what you said about writing. I also did write in the beginning until... I changed and I started packing my food. And for oh. me, I I made that switch. I mm -hmm. have gone back once in a while to write, but for me, I wasn't it wasn't done enough. Like writing didn't get it done for me. So I could write all I want, but in the moment if I didn't have it packed, I'm opening up the fridge and like, ah, <laughs> I can't. I can't put it on the plate fast enough. Right. So that's where I'd get into trouble. And it, yeah. again, it has to be 
what you do. I've met many, many people who they can commit the night before on paper or to a friend, and that's perfect. And that's what they should right. do. Yeah. So anyway. Absolutely. So, so you, in ahead. that, um, I don't know if our, our Michigan friend Sunshine is here, um, but she posed a question. She's in a Gideon Games group, and she posed a question um, what is a bright day to you? And that question, when I really, really thought about how to answer that question, um, it also changed my program. And it took away that perfectionism mm. or my need for perfectionism. So a bright day for me is, and I just heard somebody just say it in, a, in another Gideon Games group I'm in, that a bright day to her and me too is doing my best. And when I'm home, I am bright. I almost never have a problem when I'm home and my and my day is as I plan it out. I, I eat my breakfast about the same time, my lunch about the same time, dinner about the same time, and and I have no problem staying bright on those days. My bad rough days are when my schedule gets messed up or when I'm away from home and I didn't have the opportunity to fully um, prepare um, myself for the day or um, a combination of, of not being home and not quite having it prepped the way I needed to. Um, and then I still do work on navigating people. Um, and friends. And um, so when I gave myself the room to not have to be perfect every day, but to just try my best, it took this incredible pressure off of me. And it taking that pressure off tightened my program. So, um, and it tightened it in ways that if I'm at a restaurant and I order something off the menu that forgot to mention it had a rice base um, and I forgot to ask the question exactly what's in that, I did my best. I ordered as best I could off the menu and I don't beat myself up for, well, that wasn't a perfect meal, but I did my best. So you're or not if, really talking about like sugar and flour so much as so a bright day to me is doing my best with um, also doing my best of staying away from sugar and flour and doing my best at eating my prescribed quantities. Um, right. And so what that's done for me is that eating out or you never quite know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's taken a pressure off of me and then, um, spending time with friends who, um, um, have purposely made a special food yeah. and, and I will, um, have a couple bites of that, that may have some, some sugar or flour in it, um, and still call it a bright day because I was not trying to be inconsiderate. Um, for somebody who did something special. Now, I, I'd also, you know, and that's a balancing act when you're with friends. Um, I also find that when I um, explain to people that I am choosing not to have an NMF or an MMD because I am, I am choosing to treat myself well, it has, has, um, really helped me feel like I'm taking care of myself. And I've, um, I've said that to, to people and um, it's helped them think, yeah, probably are doing a good job taking care of yourself by not having sugar or flour. Um, right. What a great way of thinking about it. And I consider it a gift to myself to actually choose not to have the sugar or flour or other things that I shouldn't be having. You know, when now, we talked, you were, you were saying like triggers, like 
if you have the triggers, you can have like an indulge your friend, right? Yes. What are these triggers? What you called were indicators that you were. So um, I would on. call them more indicators than triggers. Um, because I can start seeing in advance to when my tr program is truly slipping, I can start seeing some tendencies that I'm, I'm doing. And those tendencies I, are, I can, the bites, slicks, and tastes increase. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but that has been one of the, the um, automatic behaviors that has been a little tough to get in check because there have been times where I've been fixing a meal and I know I'm not supposed to have the bite, licks, and taste. And there's something that just got in my mouth without me even really knowing I did it. It just, I just popped it in there because that's been such a long habit. Yeah. Um, so um, when I start noticing I'm doing more bite, slicks, and tastes, that I'm getting um, not quite as precise on my scale, um, those are a couple indicators to me that I need to figure out a way to tighten up my program again. Um, and, and that's when I start reaching back out to people. Um, I have gone, that's when I've gone back to writing my food down or having my star days, I, I, the calendar with the stars on it. Yep. Um, and um, done some things like that, that I've used as reminders. Um, so I um, are, if you if you do Gideon games, you know they go for a ninety day period, um, yep. and we just got done with one uh, a ninety day period on Saturday, and then restarted on the first um, for the next Gideon games group. And I had made the commitment to myself to stay bright for ninety days, and that was the first time I had ever actually gone ninety days bright. Um, so. I found that and I'm not a competitive person. Um, I had not recognized the value of having consistent days that were, I, I kind of call it an internal com competition. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and that was really motivating to me. So we just started our next Gideon Games uh, or another Gideon Games group and I'm working on the same thing. Um, now that that 90 days bright is using my definition of what is a bright day to me. Um, so both of those have taken pressure off. I, I have stuck within those 90 days because I want to do that for myself. Um, and, um, and then the pressure of, of giving myself the gift of not having to be perfect, um, also has has really helped with sticking with that 90 days so it probably by definition was not 90 perfect but it was was to me it was to me so and that's what, what is, it's all about what is your program looking like now as far as you're in maintenance i'm in maintenance and you've um, been in maintenance for quite a while because right. what was like first seven months or something it took you and now this is three over three years in maintenance right, right. yeah yeah and what so, do you allow yourself like any wiggle room as far as I get on the scale and whoa, I can't, you know, go beyond a certain weight or what do you do? Or are you, and are you adding so food? If, if I just follow the fabulous plan, I find that um, it gives me the confidence that it's okay that the scale is a little wobbly. Um, and if I don't follow the plan, I don't have that confidence. And it's that simple for me. If I right. eat my um, correct portions um, and, and my correct food categories, I don't wobble a lot. Um, if, I, if I start going off plan, I do. Um, so the... Um, I think one of the things we talked about was my brain and my stomach don't communicate very well sometimes. So I right. can eat a full meal where 
I mean, I've had other people look at my plate and say, my God, look at how much you eat. Um, I can have a meal like that. And my brain is still saying, eh, but wouldn't you like some more? Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, it's a good hour before my brain and my stomach um, are on the same page. And so by staying bright, I can then tell my brain, be quiet. You have had enough food. You do not need anything else. Um, so it gives me that confidence of um, um, this is not enough. This is enough. Well, I've never known when enough and was. That is, th that is the one line, too, that we talked about that we agreed it's this weighing and measuring thing that gives us this confidence to tell ourselves, no, you've had enough because we measured it and it's perfectly fine. I was shocked that that one line was actually going to be that much of a help to me. It gives me peace to know I have just the right amount. Absolutely. Ab yeah, absolutely. And it surprised me as well that, that it's, um, uh, well, it's a, it still amazes me that, I'm where I am, that all those years of struggling, you know, if I could, if I could go back 40, well, let's see, if I could go back 50 years to when I was 13 and started dieting, um, I would tell myself, stop struggling. This is the answer. I knew, I knew in the back of my mind that sugar was a problem for me, but I never knew what to do about it. I remember I was about 15. And I had a girlfriend who, who has never had a weight problem. She said to me, you know, if you only ate one or two of those NMFs, you wouldn't have to worry about your weight. And I remember thinking, I don't know how to do that. I do no. not know how to have one or two of those. And um, now by not having them in my life, as much as for years I would have thought, oh, no, I could never give up sugar. Now it's such a gift that I don't that I don't feel bad about myself. That well, and that opens up so much more. I got to quick get this question in from Phyllis. Sure. She was wondering if you did have any ads for your maintenance program. Did you add any more food other than what's on the weight loss plan? I've worked with with different ads. Um, I still have to be really, really careful around carbs. So I do not have any carbs added at all. I have okay. one and a half proteins that I've added. And I also shift my shifted to having four meals a day. Oh, you did? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think we talked about when, that. So, what extra time do you do? So I have my fourth meal um, at about three o'clock in the afternoon. And I did that because I was finding that even on maintenance, so I was finding that sometimes lunch was too much food. But my tough time was that late afternoon before dinner. And when I added that fourth meal, it took the, took the chatter away. Um, so how do you break it up? Is it consistent through the every day? It's, it's consistent the same every day. Um, there, if there is, um, so you take half a protein uh, on the weight loss, you take a half a protein from lunch, a half a protein from dinner, bring those into your fourth meal and then bring your fruit from lunch into your fourth meal. So this is not even counting the extra protein that you're eating. So what I now, right. So that would be on the weight loss. What I have done is, um, I, um, make all of my meals a full protein. Okay. So if you do the math on it, it, it brings it to one protein and then I add a half a protein to, to breakfast. Okay. So and did no you do that so, only after you got down to got into maintenance? Yeah, actually I did not start that until about a year and a half into my program. I was okay. finding that as I was getting wobblier, it was that late afternoon that was my problem area. And when I added that, it it changed my program again for me and it wow. tightened it up. 
that's something to consider. I know that I've I've interviewed people who are in a profession where they just don't have the time to eat a full lunch mm-hmm. and they've taken part of it. Like, for example, a teacher who may get out at three o'clock but has had hardly any time to eat their lunch. Right. So save like a little bit of the protein, maybe an apple or whatever fruit. <laughs> Excuse me. For part of their um, fourth meal, maybe it was that fly that was flying. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> help me. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I mean that is like all such good stuff. You also mentioned that when the other day you mentioned like you also have comfort food ready. What so, does that mean? So what? What? So. Um, my taste want to know totally changed, <laughs> have totally changed. So what I find is when I'm tired or um, stressed um, or don't feel good, that I don't have the energy. I love my fresh fruits and vegetables, but I don't always have the energy to or the or the desire to spend the time to eat all those fresh vegetables it takes time and it takes energy to chew all that up so i always i I am a batch cooker um and i always keep some of my um what i consider comfort foods in the fridge from in the freezer for me so one of my very favorites is a pumpkin chili those are on days where i'm tired probably not on days when i'm not feeling good um and it the taste is good to me it is i don't have to measure anything because it's all all measured out for me i just heat it it's soft so i don't have to chew um it's warm which is a comfort to me and so that that's what i've chosen to do for myself is to always have a few meals in the freezer for those days where I just don't have the energy and the, and not having the energy could be, like I said, just not having the energy to chew it or not having the energy to cook it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just thinking as, as we were talking about that, I think I'm going to try to make a um, comfort um, cauliflower macaroni and cheese and see if, if I can turn it into something that, that might be another comfort food. Um, right. So, so um, you you have <laughs> your um, pumpkin chili. Yeah, I have another it. one that you mentioned too the other day. So I always keep some spaghetti sauce in the freezer, and then um, I can grab a bag of frozen cauliflower, cauliflower rice, or and cook that up and put spaghetti sauce on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a, a low effort meal for me. Um, I also. Um, often have taco meat in the freezer Mm -hmm. so that I can throw together either a hot taco meal or a taco salad. Um, And um, so there's a few, few things like that, that I, um, I do keep always keep around. And, um, and when I say always, I really mean always, there is always one of those in the freezer. Um, And when I get low on it, I make a next batch because it's been really important to me to, um, keep those around um, for those high risk days. Well, we're going to share some of those recipes in the Starting Out Bright group. Yes, yeah, so yes. Yeah, make sure yeah, you come over great. there. Yeah. I got a comment here from uh, Wendy that who said loaded cauliflower with cheese and a little yogurt is delicious. Oh, do you have a recipe for that? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd love to see that. Okay, yeah. Wendy, you're yeah. going to have to post that one too. Great. Then I don't want to have to make it up. Perfect. Question is here, what what number are you on the susceptibility scale? I am probably a seven or an eight. Okay. But what I found, and it always confused me that I was having food problems, but I was still relatively low on the susceptibility scale. One of the things I found was that I could not tell the difference. And I only found this out in the last year. I could not tell the difference between, so my body takes on stress in my stomach. 
And I remember this from when I was four or five years old. I remember being sick to my stomach going to school when I was young. Um, I cannot tell the difference between being my stomach taking on that stress or and hunger. Those have equated to the same to me for my whole life. And it is, I am still, and there's a part that I'm working with that I'm working on helping not to clench my stomach when stress comes on. Um, and I'm starting to be able to tell the difference for the first time in my life. Isn't um, that interesting? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Um, I mean, yeah. and when you're thinking about stress, and if you mistake that, and how would you as a child not, you know, how would you know? You wouldn't. You're right. In your stomach, and then you're you're hungry, you think. Right. But you start feeding yourself, you know. Well, and I never would have called myself a binge eater, but I think I have some binge tendencies. Um, because I think what I would do was when that tension in my stomach would start, the binging would help satisfy that. So I was feeding the stress, not the hunger. Um, yeah. So it's, that's been an interesting thing to learn about myself at this point in my life. And because you already knew something was up about the sugar. Yeah. There are all these pieces that connect. I can't believe the time, Pat, and we were already getting towards the end here. I have a couple Fabulous. more questions for you. One is, sure. this. what would you say are those non-scale victories that you have received from following this program? So the biggest thing um is I had wicked migraines for years, for years. I have had one migraine in three and a half years. My goodness. Um, so um, it's it's amazing. It Wow. So I, I get a little teary-eyed because that has been so significant. Um, it, when I say it changed my life, Bright Line Eating changed my life, that is one of the biggest things. The absolute biggest things is, is the migraines. Um, the, um, um, you know, I wrote down my non-scale victories because I knew I'd forget them. <laughs> um, so um, I talked about that self-loathing. Mm -hmm. that I, I just overall feel better about myself. And I suspect there's something about the sugar actually changing the brain chemistry to feel a little depressed also. So oh, I think there's sure. some of that. Um, and so you even I, said, you even said in the beginning that you really weren't getting into it for the migraines. You, you might not have even put it together. So I will fully admit, and my friends laugh when I say this, I totally started for the vanity. And I still like the vanity side of it. Um, and I have no problem saying that because it feels really good. But that's not why I stay. I stay because the of those non-scale victories. I stay because of the sanity. Not having migraines has literally changed my life. Wow. Um, just um, I have reduced inflammation. So, so I joke. I used to joke saying I had German farm woman arms. Okay. And um, I, I, my son, one of my, my other son said to me one time, "Mom, your arms are so skinny." Um, it's like, yes, yes. I never, ever thought I would have thinner arms. And um, so um, the, the inflammation, the inflammation has changed. Oh. I used to joke on a hot summer day that I had Fred Flintstone feet. Um, and I rarely get that anymore. So that inflammation is gone. The, and, and the pain of other inflammation. Oh, um, I, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the aches totally are, get that. Right. The morning aches are better. They're still there, but but they're better. Um, my skin is healthier. I've noticed um, that that my, you know, in aging, the the happy wrinkles. Um, I did notice about six months into the program, my skin started getting better. Um, and um, 
so my husband and I are hikers. Okay. I've really noticed my ability to do a good solid hike is so much easier. I can climb. And we're not huge mountain climbing hikers, but, but we get some, some elevation and it's so much better. Um, I used to be huffing and puffing and occasionally I'd feel tightness in my chest. So that's gone. Wow. Um, and then the other thing is I feel really good about knowing that I'm eating a healthy diet as I age. That's important to me. Um, and I just recently read the, the blue zone hmm. food. The blue um, zone? Yeah. So there's some regions in the world where they've studied. How, uh, so they've identified people that live long lives in certain regions of the world. And they've identified the foods they eat. And I'm automatically eating those foods. Um, I was just, I had just pulled, I had just seen the article a couple weeks ago. And I looked at the list and thought, I got to increase my fish. But other than that, all the foods on this blue zone food list um, are automatically part of my diet. Um, Doesn't that feel so great? <laughs> it, yes, yes. Like that so, you really are doing the best you can. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so when I talk about the sanity, it it's the sanity for me is living a healthier life. Um, feeling better about myself and the no migraines. Um, that's what keeps me motivated. And, and learning self-care um, and increasing my self-care, Bright Line Eating is part of my self-care program. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to go back. What a gift you've given life. yourself, Pat. What a gift. I mean, really, what what more could you do? So here we are, and I have one more question because somebody is going to hear you and really consider doing this too. What would you say to them? What would you say to someone who is considering beginning Bright Line Eating? Don't be afraid of it. If, and I've had this conversation with people, um, if you think you can't do it, try just giving up the sugar and flour. Don't measure anything. Just see what happens. Um, and see how you feel with that. Um, and don't be afraid that, that giving it up is going to bring you the feeling of losing something. Mm -hmm. Because it's the total opposite. Give yourself the chance. That's great. You know, and it actually sounds from what you were saying about, and that this is such a profound thing for you to say, and a very vulnerable thing for you to say about the self-loathing. But it sounds like little by little, you've just opened yourself up to your authentic self. And you know what? That's even part of what you're doing with the Michigan Conference, that you are like, you are able to open up and give of yourself because you've let yourself in. You've let yourself be real, that you know you've got something to share. And Well, what a lovely thing to say. That makes me feel really good. It's Thank a you. beautiful thing you're doing, bringing people together. And I'm just so happy to be a part of it, you know, coming up in September. So again, for those who did, maybe weren't here at the beginning of the call, Pat is heading up with others, uh, the Michigan Conference, September 30th. And, you know, if you're in Michigan or if you want to come from out of Michigan, you can connect on, on the Starting Out Bright group, but you can also go to the Michigan's Brightest Facebook group. It's a private group, great people in there. And you'll get all the you'll get all the scoop. Any yes. last words about that or anything, Pat? Mm, I don't think so. I think I think you've done a great job keeping us going. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so much, and uh, yeah. I just appreciate you so much for sharing your story, Pat, and just 
great to become friends. And I look forward to seeing you face to face in September. So that's going to be really great. So, well, and I want to thank you for, for doing this, for giving us all this gift of, of helping people and, and motivating me to, to um, reach out to our Michigan Brightest group to see if they wanted to have an all-state gathering. So, yeah, um, it's you really were the motivation. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I had no idea. I got to tell you, somebody in the group said this fourth meal is going to be what she needs to do to to get her program back. So right there. Fabulous. Fabulous. And, uh, you never know. It can be one little thing mm -hmm. like that that changes everything. And I have many in the in the chat saying very encouraging, Pat. Thank you so much for sharing. So oh, with that, you. I am going to close as I do each week. Good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good thank night, you. everybody. Thank you, everybody. So, Pat, how would you like to play Three Question Thursday? Absolutely. Got to do oh, it. All right. Okay. Question about exercise. The other day you said something. I said, you know, did you ever bring exercise back in? And what did you say? So I never took it out. I had been an exerciser before, um, and I've maintained it. Um so my husband and I, well, let me reword this. My husband drags me to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Hey, he doesn't have to drag me too hard, but but yeah. I so appreciate that I've I've got my my exercise buddy and we go together. And that's one of our let's stay healthy as we in our retired retirement as we age. So yeah. Okay. Well that's gonna lead me to the second question. You're retired now. Are yep. you doing any traveling? What is the what do you do about that for food? Oh well, so actually we have a three week trip coming up in about a month, um, and um, we eat in we 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 rent um, uh, places that have a kitchen typically. Okay, I have been known to microwave a meal in the hotel room. But we eat out about 50-50 for dinner. Most of our breakfasts are in. Most of our lunches are in. Um, or, you know, my, my, my food I'm cooking. And what I have to be really careful about with eating out with traveling is not relaxing too much. Mm -hmm. And what I find is if I look over a menu... It's anywhere in the country that we, we can travel to. So um, we don't always research a menu or we don't always have the option. But I can look at a menu and I could say, you know, that looks really good. And if I ordered that, I could be really good and only eat half of that borderline. Sure. Not quite there, but, but there. I stopped doing that because yeah. if it's on the plate, I'm going to eat it. So... Um, and I've gained weight from trips by allowing that to happen. So I, I do struggle a little bit with I'm tired of a salad or I'm tired of a plain meat. But I back up and I say, but that's the gift back to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm really not. It, and I have learned that to live with sometimes with the philosophy of, a meal is sometimes just there to fill your belly. And you get, and if I take that, that do I want an optimal fabul fabulous meal out of the package for every meal? It's helped me to recognize it's okay that that was a mundane meal. Um, because it was back to what am I doing that's treating myself well. And when you think about all the fabulous food, the fabulous plan that we're on, the fabulous food, when you say a mundane meal, that really probably looks pretty good compared to the wild, wild assortment of stuff we used to have. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I feel good afterwards. <laughs> right, with no I, I had... stomach ache and no, yeah. what do you call that stuff, the backup in your throat, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. at night? Yeah, I, mean, I had that anyway. <laughs> I had to chuckle because 
um, one of my sons said to me, mom, do you get tired of eating the same food all the time? And I, I think I kind of like what looked at him like, what are you ta talking about? Um, because the, if I feel like my choices have expanded. Oh yes. Um, more than I ever expected it to because my taste buds are different. And it's such beautiful food. Yes. yes. Okay. I got to ask you this third okay. question because sure. you, you were saying, I'm like, like, I'm like, so what do you do like to keep track or whatever? Cause you're not writing your food down, which this is fine. I mean, you're committing to a bright day. Everybody does their own thing. I pack, you do that. But you said you have the chart on your cupboard door. Okay. Yep, I I have the chart of what the how many um, ounces of each of the food in the different food ca categories. And I have that on my kitchen door. I've written down the ones that aren't on that. And um, I've memorized how much food I can have. I, I eat a breakfast and lunch. You know, it's a choice of probably three or four different things I have most of the time. It's dinner that changes. And um, I pretty much have it memorized. Here's my quantities. And if I don't, I've got my um, chart right on the door so I don't have to go digging for it. But you have some things on that chart that I never saw before. All these conversions. So I, well, you... so I um, do batch cooking. Yeah. And... And I use my Instant Pot. So I had to figure out how much dry beans or lentils are in, in one of my batch recipes. And then they talk about only weigh your vegetables after you cook them. Right. Well, I'm putting well, them in a figure that pot out. with everything. So what I do is I reduce. So I weigh, I weigh all my food when I'm putting it in my pot. Um. And I reduce my vegetables by 10 to 15% because I figured that would be the shrinkage you'd get if you were sauteing it or cooking it another way. And then I take my whole batch and I measure that whole batch and divide it by however many portions I, I put in at the beginning. And, and there's my portions. So I don't Did worry about whether... Out? Didn't you figure out like how much dry beans would? So I use an average of 2.4 ounces for dried beans and lentils per six ounces of a cooked portion. Okay. So that's with an Instapot. Right. And that's not perfect because if you went through and looked at what each different type of bean was, you'd find there'd be a variance, but, but that's an average. And um, that's taking that perfection out and putting in a, it works. Um, Peace, sanity. That's, absolutely. That's what that's yep. called. Yep. Well, Pat, again, thank you so much for your willingness to share your story. Thanks for all the great information, inspiration, and thank you for playing Three Question Thursday. <laughs> well, thank you so much again. This was great. And um, thanks to my friends who are here. And um, look forward to forward seeing to you all in September. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Stay Thank bright. you.